I'm going to read through Half Cast by John Agard. This is in preparation for the Edexcel IGCSE English Literature Exam, Paper 1. So looking at the title, um, which is Half Cast, this is a derogatory term used um, to describe people who are mixed race. I haven't heard this term used for a very, very long time. Um, it was much more common in the 1980s. I do recall um, hearing this term when I was at school in the in the 80s and early 90s. So, um, so I think things potentially have changed since this was written. Hopefully they have. Um, but John Agard wrote this because he was personally offended whenever he heard this term being used uh, because he was mixed raced. So if we break this term down, firstly, we have half, which implies that the person is incomplete. And caste implies a racial hierarchy. Um, so you can imagine why, you can understand why John Agard would find this offensive. Now, what you, you will notice is that this um, poem is written in his dialect, which was um, Guyanese Creole um, and a mixture of standard English as well. I'm not even going to attempt the accent. If you did want to hear how this should be delivered, then I encourage you to search on YouTube for John Agard um, half cast and you'll be able to hear him deliver it in a much more convincing accent than one that I could put on. Excuse me, standing on one leg, I'm half cast. So immediately we have this direct address. I imagine he's heard someone say this and he's responding to that. Um, so we have this direct address which engages the reader and directly challenges bigots. And bigot is someone who is racist, who is narrow-minded. Um, so because he's directly addressing um, people who use this term, the poem is, is really quite confrontational. I've also highlighted in green, as you can see here, um, and all the way through the poem, yourself, in other words, yourself, um, is repeatedly used. And I think this is John A. God emphasizing that actually the issue lies with the bigot who uses this term, not with him. Um, and I think that's really important for John A. God in this poem, that he's challenging the reader to rethink the term and what it really implies. And then the second line has this r ridiculous idea of him standing on one leg. So it's a, sar a sarcastic tone um, and it's humorous as well. And this highlights how ridiculous the term half cast is and what it essentially implies. Um, I haven't highlighted that, but he's put I'm half cast. And I think I'm here is actually really important because we immediately know that this is personal to him. Um, and I think that makes the message even more powerful. And I would argue the reader is more likely to listen because he is speaking from experience. Explain yourself what you mean when you say half cast. We're going to see these three lines repeated throughout the poem. Um, and again, we've got the direct address and he's challenging them. Explain yourself. What do you mean? So. The poem is really quite argumentative as well, um, which reflects how strongly he feels about this topic. You mean when Picasso mixed red and green is a half cast canvas? So he uses this analogy of Picasso and the fact that he obviously mixed colours to create these beautiful pieces of art. Um, and it emphasises the beauty of mixing those colours. Um, so what we learn is, he is unapologetic about being mixed race. He thinks it's beautiful to mix race, uh, mix races, and um, and likens it to art. It's it's as beautiful as art, but it's also obviously a humorous metaphor as well because he's trying to highlight how ridiculous it is to think of someone who's mixed race as less or uh, less than whole. Explain yourself what you mean when you say half cast. So again, we've got that those three lines repeated. You mean when light and shadow mix in the sky is a half cast weather? 
Well, in that case, England weather nearly always half cast. In fact, some of them cloud half cast till them overcast. So spiteful, them don't want the sun pass. Um, so we've got a humorous metaphor basically saying, do we call it half cast weather then when we have a mix of light and shadow in the sky? Um, he's playing on as well this idea of um, people being so miserable, actually, they might not want the sun to pass. You could look at this in two ways. Is he saying that some of the some people that he had um, come across in England were so spiteful? Maybe he didn't have a a, a positive experience. Um, maybe he was treated poorly in England. So I did wonder if he meant, you know, the people that he's seen in England are spiteful and wouldn't want the sun to pass. But as a, a bigger picture, I think he is talking about bigots. So the cloud not wanting the sun to pass, I think, is a metaphor for bigots who block out their humanity. And then he gives one line to our ass, which um, translates to my ass. It's an um, expletive. And I think it just shows how angry he is and how uh, at how ridiculous the term half cast is. Explain yourself what you mean when you say half cast. We've got that repetition again. He's continually confronting those who use that term. You mean Tchaikovsky, sit down at the piano and mix a black key with a white key as a half cast symphony. Um, so now he refers to Tchaikovsky and the beautiful music that he makes by mixing a black key with a white key. So it's another analogy like the one with Picasso that highlights how beautiful it is to mix. So again, it reinforces this idea that he feels very proud of his mixed heritage and he sees it as a beautiful thing. And of course, it again is a humorous metaphor. And um, what you'll notice is I've highlighted, uh, I've circled Picasso and Tchaikovsky. Now, I only just noticed this. That's obviously my autocorrect, but Tchaikovsky actually in the poem is written with a lowercase t, just like Picasso is a lowercase p. Be interesting to think about why he might have done that. Personally, I think he's trying to highlight that um, we're all equal. So he's not trying to put anyone, because um, he doesn't use capital letters anywhere really, or or hardly. So I think there's something to do with equality here. But it'd be interesting for you to um, consider what you think that might mean. Explain yourself. Uh, oh, sorry. Explain yourself. What you mean? Are listening to you with the keen half of me ear. I'm looking at you with the keen half of me eye. And when I'm introduced to you, I'm sure you'll understand why I offer you half a hand. And when I sleep at night, I close half an eye. Consequently, when I dream, I dream half a dream. And when moon begin to glow, I half cast human being, cast half a shadow. So we've got this um, section here. I've highlighted half is repeated um, on almost every line. Um, and I think it really bugs him, this idea that he is considered half a person when someone uses the term half cast. Again, he's using imagery here to paint this ridiculous image of him being half a person so he's taking it quite literal by saying half of his ear half of his eye he's got half a hand um half a dream um so he's again just trying to um highlight how ridiculous the term is um but i think it gets a little darker here i dream half a dream i wonder if he thinks he feels like people underestimate him that maybe he is less capable than those what they might consider of pure race, um, that he can't dream fully, that he can't accomplish the same things as someone else. Um, and then we have this quite quite a sinister tone or quite a dark image of this full moon and he, he's only able to cast half a shadow. So I think it's quite a dark image which reflects how actually people might even fear him or um, think that he is capable of evil as well. Um, so although he's he's been quite humorous and, and joking about this, I think it becomes quite sinister towards um, the end of here. Um, but you must come back tomorrow with the whole of your eye and the whole of your ear and the whole of your mind. So what he's really doing there is challenging the reader to open their mind. And he insinuates 
that actually it isn't he who is mixed race that is less than a person. It is the bigot who is less than whole. It's the bigot who is using le- half his brain to think. Um, so it's quite interesting that he he turns the tables there to say, actually, I'm more of a person. I am more human than you are if you think in this way. And I will tell you the other half of my story. So he's quite sarcastic as well. Um, so let's have a look at some the form and structure. We have free verse. Um, I think this makes it quite conversational. Um, which I think engages the reader and makes them really listen to his personal experience. We have three unequal stanzas. I'm going to focus mostly on the second long stanza. So it starts here, explain yourself, and goes all the way down to and the whole of your mind. Um, so I think through the use of enjarman and through the use of, um, of no punctuation in this stanza, um, it delivers much more like a rant so you can imagine him getting really angry and just spilling out with all these frustrations that he has and I think that's what that second stanza reflects there's no end stopped line even at the end um so I think that reiterates that it isn't the full story and if you think um in the way a bigot does then you're not opening your mind to hear the full story you're not opening your mind um to see John Agard as a whole person and really appreciate him for everything that he is. Um, the phonetic spelling, I think, is quite unapologetic of John Agard. Um, he is not afraid to show the dialect in which he speaks. And I think that shows a great grasp on his identity and that he has no intention of changing um, to please anyone else or to fit in. He's really proud of his accent. And also, I think it makes the poem even more personal um, because you can really imagine him delivering it. He is, I feel like he's personally speaking to the reader by using the dialect in which he would deliver this poem. Um, The lines are incomplete as well. And I think that reflects how he is viewed. He feels like those that would refer to him as half cast would view him as half a person. And I think the lines reflect that. Um, in terms of themes, I didn't write them down. I thought I had. Uh, in terms of themes, this the major one here is identity, um, discrimination as well, um, and even conflict because he is very confrontational. 